Now let's look at the other option for a solar charge controller, the pulse wave modulation. Now, PWM, you only see them with very, very small systems nowadays. They used to be more common, but nowadays only the very small systems because the controllers are not as diverse and not as flexible as the MPPT solar charge controllers, but they are relatively inexpensive if you go for the very small capacity solar charge controllers. Um, so PWM is essentially one single switch. It's a switch which can switch really fast. So in electrical terms, you say that a switch is open when there's no electricity flowing through it. So when you disconnect the circuit, it is open. And when you close the switch, then you allow the circuit to uh, conduct electricity, right? So it can switch really fast between the open and closed position. And it can also regulate how long it's open and how long it's closed, right? So it can say open, closed, open, closed, open, or closed, open, closed, open, closed, or just closed all the time or open all the time. Um, so let's look at the whiteboard again. Let's draw a simple diagram there. So we know we've got the IV curve here, right? We've seen that before. And we've got a panel. We have a battery and we connect the panel to the battery and we place the PWM charge controller in that circuit. And then the PWM is able to open or close the circuit. Now, if the PWM charge controller decides that it wants to pull as much power from the panel, it will have the uh, switch closed, so all the power can flow from the panel towards the battery. But then it's important for you to realize that if this is the situation, then the voltage of the battery is the same as the voltage of the panel, or the, pa the voltage of the panel is the same as that of the battery. So let's assume you have a battery which is quite extensively discharged, and the battery has a voltage of 12 volt. That means that the panel is also operating at 12, po 12 volt point, so that you are at the 12 volt point on the IV curve. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go ahead again. The same is true as if the battery is charged somewhere halfway, so it's 13 volt. So the voltage of the battery is the same as the voltage on the panel. If you're trying to pull as much power from the panel as you can with a PWM charge controller. And now here comes the tricky thing. So let's say that for this specific panel, we know the IV curve and we know that the maximum power point lies at 13 volts, right? So if you'd operate this panel at 13 volts, you get the maximum power output from the panel. But now if we're in a situation where the battery is quite extensively discharged and is at 12 volts, uh, that means that you're on the left hand side of the MPP and that you're drawing less power from the panel, what it could theoretically give you in this situation, right? So that means that you are performing the panel at a less than optimum point. The extent to which really depends on what kind of a panel and what the difference is between the voltage of the battery and the voltage of the maximum power point. Normally, if you would have purchased a 12 volt panel, uh, or if you would have matched your panel to your battery, 12, 24, 48 volts, then the manufacturer has already tried to place the maximum power point, the voltage of the maximum power point, as close to the, the battery voltage that you normally operate your, ba your, um, your battery at. Now, as you're charging your battery, the voltage of your battery would slowly increase and it would go towards the 13 volt, volt point. So the voltage of your battery is 13 volts, then for this situation, you would be drawing the maximum amount of power from the panel. But then as you continue to charge your battery, you go beyond the 13 volts. You go towards the 14 volt, for example. But then you are way to the right hand side of the maximum power point and you will be, you will be pulling le much less power from the panel than what you could, right? Now, I must say that I have slightly aggravated the negative impact of the power output from the panel of using a PWN, but this is the, the basic principle. By using a PWM charge controller, you are getting over a complete charge cycle. You are normally getting a little bit less power from the panel than what you could. Still, they are really affordable. They have been around for a long time. And if you choose a proper quality PWM charge controller, then they can last for a very long time. So it might be ideal for your situation. It really depends on how large your solar array is. So let's go online and let's look at an example of a supplier that supplies the PWM solar charge controller. So I'm going to Renergy.com. I'm not affiliated with Renergy, but I just want to show you their PWM charge controller. 
and show you a couple of values that might be of interest to you, might be important for you as you're shopping for PWM charge controllers. So here we are at the website. I'm going to products, charge controllers, and I want to look at a PWM, like a simple PWM. All the way at the bottom, there's the Wonder 10 amp PWM charge controllers for a listed price of $20. That sounds pretty good. So let's open it up and go straight to the specifications section. There you go. And here's a couple of values that I want to show. Um, so this PWM charge controller can operate with both a 12 volt and a 24 volt system. And here you've got the rate of charge current again. So uh, this is the maximum charge current that the charge controller can fed from the panel towards the load, towards the battery or whatever you're doing with it. That's useful as well. So you've got the maximum gauge size that you can connect to the charge control. So apparently it's a screw terminal. So you can just uh, screw a wire straight into the charge controller. And there's the maximum PV input voltage. Right, so you can make sure that your maximum open circuit voltage from your panel or panels do not exceed the 50 volts. And here we can see what the maximum amount of solar power is that you can connect to this solar charge controller. So 130 watts for 12 volts and double of that if you're operating a battery bank of 12 volts, right? So this is really an advantage if you are using the very same charge controller, but your battery bank voltage is higher, then you can connect much more solar power to it but you're still buying one solar charge controller. So depending on your situation, this can be really an advantage for you, um, provided that you have a flexibility of choosing a certain battery voltage. So now you understand a little bit how a PWM charge controller works.